Okay, well, I'm not giving my age away anyway. <laughs> exactly. So, good morning, conference. And it's fantastic to actually be here in person again to see people. This is the first time in what has been a really difficult and challenging two years. It's the, my second time actually speaking at a conference, but this is the first time I'm speaking to you as the leader of the Welsh Local Government Association. And I particularly want to pay tribute to my predecessor, Baroness, Baroness Debbie Wilcox, was a powerful voice now in Westminster at the Lords. I think it's fair to say it's been a fairly unprecedented two years, especially for local authorities, and we've really been at the forefront in the response to the challenges we faced in Wales. Firstly, we had devastating floods brought about by Storm Dennis and other extreme weather events in 2020 in February. My own local, th my own local authority area in the Cantaf was very badly affected, with flooding in communities right throughout the county borough. That tested not only the council's resilience, but that of the emergency services. But we and they rose to the challenge. Similar events were witnessed right across Wales, and I want to pay tribute to Welsh Labour councillors and council staff across the country for the incredible efforts. <laughs> Within weeks, of course, we had to respond to the rapid growth of the COVID-19 pandemic which has seen local authorities in Wales stand shoulder to shoulder with our colleagues in the Welsh NHS on the front line. I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank all council staff across Wales for their efforts over the last two years. And I'd like to give particular thanks to social care staff who too often get overlooked and don't get the credit they deserve for tireless and amazing work that they have done throughout the pandemic. But of course, here, we will not overlook them in this hall. I'm pleased to say that Welsh Labour Government has recognised their work with additional payments and the latest payment of £1,000 on top of introducing the real living wage from April. And some Welsh-led uh, local authorities, including my own, will be going further and paying a minimum of £10 an hour from April. <laughs> we know, though, we need to do more work on retention and recruitment within social care. But at least this recognition that we have carried out does show our appreciation of those staff. And here in Wales, with the Welsh Labour Government and Welsh Labour Councils, we will not overlook their contribution or forget the sacrifices that they made to keep people safe. Compare that to how the Tories responded to the crisis in Westminster. In Wales, local authorities were not only on the front, front line because we wanted to be, but we were there because our First Minister, Mark Drayford, wanted us and the public sector to work hand in hand without the need to privatise our response. In Wales, we didn't see hundreds of millions of pounds wasted on contracts with Circo, and I think they're still looking for their £37 billion worth in England. Instead, we saw councils being supported and funded to provide test, trace, protect with our Welsh NHS. We've also seen some local authorities help run vaccination centres and testing centres, and they've been at the heart of providing business support that business support was delivered quicker than in England, but also, may I add, businesses in Wales received a higher level of financial support than businesses in England received from Tories at Westminster. Our local authorities have been working closely with the voluntary sector, providing support networks and invaluable services to the vulnerable and those residents who had to shield. Despite all these challenges, our Welsh, lo Welsh Labour local authorities have continued to deliver for their communities. And whether that's been essential services, such as refuse and recycling collections, or delivering on our massive investment programmes. From the brand new arena that's been built at Swansea to at least Cadian development in my own area of the Cantaf, from supporting the South Wales Metro and the South Wales Valleys to developing state-of-the-art 21st century schools from Flintshire to Newport and right across Wales. Our Welsh Labour councillors are going all out to support their communities. And we've also been seeing the vast number of council and social houses being built right across Wales thanks to the funding from a Welsh Labour government. A key part of the success in the relationship between local government and the Welsh government, which has never been stronger, is, be, uh, is about the way that Labour council leaders in particular work with ministers and us all ministers. 
but I want to pay a particular credit uh, to Julie James, who was the local government minister throughout the first half of the pandemic and subsequently... And subsequently, Rebecca Evans, who is now the local government uh, minister and finance minister, I have to say we have worked extremely closely with those ministers. And I also have to say there's been many a late night conversation and call between ministers, some of them I probably won't repeat. But, but that close cooperation is critical, not just as council leaders when we meet regularly with ministers to ensure that our communities are protected during these challenging times, but to also ensure that the, we work as a team to deliver that message of a stronger, greener, fairer Wales. Now, conference, we may be local authorities by name, but that doesn't mean we ignore our responsibilities across our borders. Our councils have been acting on our Welsh Labour values and deliver the vision of Wales being a nation of sanctuary. Local government has helped settle refugees from Afghanistan, in particular through the interpreter resettlement scheme. These are people who work side by side with our British troops on the ground and local authorities in Wales have been here to support them. And of course, we recognise the responsibility to people of Ukraine. Local government in Wales and the Labour councillors in particular have been pressing the Tory government to act with urgency and compassion, something they are sadly lacking. Incredibly, this week, a meeting with the UK government where we were hoping to get clarity was cancelled on Monday and rescheduled to Wednesday. And the reason they give us at the WLGA was because of the urgent situation. You really couldn't make it up. They are absolutely asleep at the wheel. As soon as the Tory Immigration and Home Office Ministers agree a way forward and allocate us families to support, my message is our doors are open. We in, to us here in Wales, a nation of sanctuary is not just a slogan. Keeping a welcome is rooted in Labour values and rooted in Welsh values. And our local authorities stand ready, side by side with our Welsh Labour government, to support Ukrainians seeking sanctuary. <laughs> Conference, I want to end by celebrating the fantastic result in last May's Senate elections under Mark Drayford's leadership. It was a testament not only to the response to the pandemic in Wales, but also the faith and trust that people have both in Mark and in Welsh Labour. But we not, must not get complacent. The task at hand is now is for us to follow that up and ensure that Welsh Labour councillors are returned the length and breadth of Wales come May's elections. And I would ask you all to go away from you in Llandidno and give everything you can to your Welsh Labour candidates over the next 54 days, knocking on as many doors as you can, speaking to as many voters as you can, as every conversation will count. And then we can turn our focus to getting rid of the Tories, putting Keir Starmer into Downing Street, and securing a Labour UK government for Westminster. Thank you, Conference. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you to all of our hard-working and